morning and uh, welcome to this lecture number 13 of the course stochastic hydrology. Uh, if you recall in the last lecture we dealt with data generation techniques especially the stream flow generation using the first order Markov processes and we introduced the and uh, for annual flow generation the first order Markov model. Uh, recall that this will express x t using the lag 1 correlation and it is which indicates it is dependence on x t minus 1. And the model that we introduced uh, will preserve the mean, the standard deviation and the correlations of the historical data. So, if you have annual series of uh, stream flows, you can uh, compute these moments and then use the model the Marco model first order Marco model and generate series of uh, annual inflows, annual flows. Then we uh, relax the requirement that the uh, series be stationary and we consider the non-stationary first order Marco model where for each of the month or a season you have different means the standard deviations and the lag 1 correlations. We incorporated that into the mod Markov model and then introduced the non-stationary first order Markov model. This in the hydrologic literature is famously known as the Thomas fairing model and typically it is used for flow generation for monthly and seasonal time periods and in some cases it has also been used for flow generation during smaller time intervals like 10 day time uh, intervals and fortnightly time intervals etcetera. Recall that the requirements for the Markov model as we introduced in the last lecture are that the flow C, uh, time series can be approximated to be a Markov chain and also that the flow series can be approximated to follow normal distribution. The Thomas fearing model that we introduced in the last lecture requires the flows to follow normal distribution and it also generates negative values because we are following the normal distribution and in the applications the negative values are set to 0. If you are using the sequence that you so generated using the Thomas fearing model into let us say simulation of reservoir operation. At the time of applications you set the negative values to 0, but while using the uh, generating model itself you keep the negative values to generate the next values. Because it uh, generates negative values often using the log transformation is advantageous. So, we also have the log transform Thomas fearing model where simply you transform the x t into log x t and use the Thomas fearing model on the log x t series. That is also quite popularly uh, applied in hydrologic literature. Now, we move to the next topic which I introduced just towards the end of the last lecture. This is called as the frequency domain analysis. So far whatever we have been doing on the time series analysis is on the time domain. For example, we calculate the correlations. Uh, and then plot the correlogram. All of these are done with respect to time. We talk about correlation at a particular lag and these lag that we considered are with respect to time. We can also transform the observed series x t into a frequency domain and then do the analysis in the frequency domain. And often this is very advantageous especially in determining the periodicities inherent in the data. So, the frequency domain analysis we carry out mainly to identify the periodicities in the data. If you recall we expressed x t the time series as consisting of d t a deterministic component plus epsilon t which is a stochastic component. And right in the beginning we mentioned that the dt that is the deterministic component can consist of 
let us say a long term mean around which uh, the values are fluctuating or you may have a trend increasing or a decreasing trend around which the values are fluctuating or you may have a periodicity like this around which the values are fluctuating randomly apart from having a jump, jump in the series and so on. Identification of these periodicities is an important problem in hydrology. The correlogram as, as you can see here, if you have a, a periodic process, the correlogram will typically look like this. In the, in the time domain, if you plot the correlogram r k versus k or rho k versus k, the pe uh, periodic process will look like this. So, where the correlation correlogram is oscillating periodically and typically it uh, dies down slowly in most of the hydrologic processes. The correlogram indicates that yes, there are periodicities inherent in the data, but identification of the exact periodicities and the significant periodicities inherent in the data is better done with the spectral analysis, where we transform the time series x t into the frequency domain and then we analyze the time series in the frequency domain. This analysis is called as the spectral analysis. So, the periodicities in the data which were indicated by the correlogram can best be determined by analyzing the time series in the frequency domain and such analysis is called as a spectral analysis or analysis in the frequency domain. Uh, the basic premise or the basic uh, uh, hypothesis with which we start is that the observed time series is a random sample of a process over time and is made up of oscillations of all possible frequencies. So, this, this is the basic premise on which the frequency domain analysis is based. And then we look at the time series as having consisted, having been consisted of several frequencies and then we look at which of these frequencies are dominant in the observed time series. The spectral analysis as we introduce now is widely used in uh, several other fields also like electrical engineering, physics, metrology apart from hydrology. Uh, in hydrology specifically the applications of spectral analysis include uh, dry and wet run analysis let us say you have sequence a large sequence of uh, rainfall data and you would be interested in frequencies of uh, dry periods or wet periods, periodicities of dry and wet periods that is where we use the uh, frequency domain analysis. We also use it for developing models for synthetic generation in which we would be incorporating into the models the periodicities inherent in the data and for that identification of periodicities becomes important. Even in the hydrologic forecasting models when we are talking about mid medium term forecasts let us say over the next season 6 months, 1 year or 3 years medium term forecasts when we are talking about we need to incorporate the periodicities in the process into the models and that is where we use the spectral analysis. And the recent research area in hydrology which deals with impact studies of uh, that is the climate change impact studies on hydrology. Such studies also require identification of periodicities so oscillations decadal oscillations and so on in the particular process that we are talking about. So, frequency domain analysis is an important topic in stochastic hydrology. We will not go into the theoretical development of several aspects of the frequency domain analysis that we will be dealing with. 
rather what we will do is we will pick up directly the expressions that are available and then see how we apply to a hydrologic time series, how we interpret the results and how we identify the periodicities, how we check the significance of the periodicity so identified and what do we do with these periodic periodicities in subsequently building up the time series models. So, the first uh, level as I said we express the time series x t as consisting of different frequencies. For example, in this case we take a sinusoidal uh, representation of the time series. So, we write x t as a constant alpha naught and then summation over k to n by 2 or n minus 1 by 2, where n is the number of data points that we have. If n is even, we write the summation up to n by 2. If n is odd, you write up to n minus 1 by 2. Alpha k cos 2 pi f k t plus beta k sin 2 pi f k t summation ends here plus epsilon t. So, this is how we are expressing the time series as consisting of a sinusoidal component, a random component and a constant. For a given k, this f k here is the kth harmonic of the fundamental frequency, the fundamental frequency is simply 1 by n. So, f k is written as k by n. So, for a given k, we will have expressions for determining alpha k, you know f k, you are writing for the time period t, therefore, this t is known. Beta k, we have an expression, I will just present it. Again, f k is known, t is known and epsilon t is a random component. The periodicity, when we write x t in this form, is simply 1 by f k. So, f k is the frequency, obviously, periodicity will be 1 by frequency. So, in this expression, we determine alpha naught, which was a constant here, by simply the estimate of the mean, which is x bar, and alpha k <coughs> we determine by this expression 2 by n t is equal to 1 to n x t cos 2 pi f k t. You are summing it over all the time periods t is equal to 1 to n and this is the original time series x t. f k is the particular frequency that we have determined for that particular k that is k by n and t is the particular time period. Similarly, beta k we determine by x t sin 2 pi f k t. Now, these expressions are in general taken up to about uh, a maximum lag of m and this uh, lag typically we consider up to about 25 percent of the total amount of data, total number of data points that we have. So, about 25 percent of uh, the data lag. Uh, these expressions for alpha k and beta k are valid up to k is equal to n by 2 as, as mentioned here. Uh, when n is odd, uh, the expressions are true until, true until k is equal to n minus 1 by 2 and the last values of alpha n by 2 and beta n by 2 will be given by this beta n by 2 will be equal to 0. Now, let us see what are the uh, interpretations of this. The way we have introduced the spectrum is the called the variance spectrum. So, it divides the variance that is the observed variance into number of intervals of frequency or bands of frequency. And the spectral density as we write here, it indicates the amount of variance per interval of frequency. So, we write the spectral density i k as n by 2 alpha k square plus beta k square. 
uh, written for k is equal to 1 to m, m is a maximum lag. Similarly, we write the angular frequency, the frequency that we introduced uh, namely f k is equal to k by n is now converted into angular frequency by writing it as 2 pi k by n. So, omega k here is 2 pi k by n again written for uh, k is equal to 1 to maximum lag. A plot of i k versus omega k, omega k on the x axis, i k on the y axis is called as the line spectrum or simply spectrum in many cases and it looks typically like this. So, with p as given by uh, n by k, we have omega k is equal to 2 pi by p, p is the periodicity. Now, we plot omega k versus i k, omega k is determined by 2 pi k by n and i k is determined by this expression, alpha k is determined early as earlier, alpha k is determined using this, beta k is determined using this and therefore, we know all the terms given a time series, we can determine for various values of k the w k values and you plot w k versus i k. This is called as spectrum in general. Uh, these are the various salient features that we must remember. The total area under spectrum, when we are talking about the variance spectrum, the total area under the spectrum is equal to the various of the process. A peak like this in the spectrum indicates an important contribution to spectrum. That is the whole range here, this whole range we are talking about the distribution of the spectrum, uh, distribution of the variance I am sorry, in several bands of frequencies. So, whenever you get a peak here, this indicates that there is an important contribution to the variance of the process around these frequencies. The prominent spikes here indicate that there is a periodicity corresponding to the fre angular frequency that we are talking about. So, when you plot the uh, spectrum, you capture these peaks, look at the omega k values, convert that into the periodicity and that indicates that a periodicity corresponding to that particular time exists in the data. Now, the particular expressions that we just introduced are one among several possible expressions for uh, spectrum estimates. So, we are using one of them in the text and in the literature you may find several different uh, ways of expressing the spectrum, but we will adhere to the particular type of expressions that we have just introduced. So, essentially then what we are doing in spectral analysis is to convert the x t which is the observed time series into a sort of a Fourier transform uh, uh, where we are using uh, a sinusoidal representation of the time series and then estimating the spectral density i k we are plotting i k versus omega k versus i k, where omega k is the angular frequency and when we plot omega k versus i k or i k on the y axis and omega k on the x axis, we see spikes or peaks in the spectral uh, density typically. Now, these peaks will indicate the periodicities inherent in the data the omega k corresponding to a particular peak, you convert that into the periodicity 2 pi by omega k and that periodicity in the time domain will indicate the periodicity that is uh, present in the data. For example, if you are looking at monthly stream flow data and then you plot uh, a spectrum, plot the line spectrum, typically you may get an omega k of omega k which corresponds to a periodicity of 12 months or maybe 6 months, 3 months etcetera depending on the type of uh, stream flow data that you have. So, when we uh, look at certain examples, these points will become clear. We will see one example now, where first we introduce 
how exactly we estimate alpha k, beta k, the coefficients for a specific value of k. Remember uh, for a given k, f k is equal to simply k by n, n is the number of observations that you have. So, let us get an example here, this is the time series, we have 10 values here, this is just for demonstration, you have 10 values of x t. We are determining omega k and i k for k is equal to 1. Because k is equal to 1, you know f k is equal to k by n, n is 10 in this case, therefore f k is equal to 0 0.1. And so, here we write t is equal to 1, x t is known 105, these are the observed values of the time series 2 pi into 1 by 10 into t in this case it is 1 in radians. So, cos of 2 pi f k t is 0 0.809, similarly sin of 2 pi f k t is 0 0.5878 and so on. Then we write x t cos 2 pi f k t and x t sin 2 pi f k t. What are we doing here? We are looking at this expression i k is equal to n by 2 alpha k square plus beta k square. So, for a given value of k, we determine alpha k and beta k and for that given value of k, we are determining i k. So, the example is for k is equal to 1. So, for a given k, first determine f k by k by n and then apply this these expressions. So, x t cos 2 pi f k t, x t sin 2 pi f k t and you get summations here. Uh, alpha k, you look at the expression for alpha k here is 2 by n x t cos 2 pi f k t, t is equal to 1 to n. So, this is the expression we are using to estimate alpha k. Similarly, for beta k we are using this expression. So, we sum over uh, sum this over all the uh, n time periods and get this value. Similarly, sum this term get this value you get alpha k as 2 by n which is 2 by 10 into the summation of x t cos 2 pi f k t and you get alpha k as 3.1046. Similarly, beta k you sum all the sine terms here x t sin 2 pi f k t terms over t is equal to 1 to n and you get beta k as minus 8.3698. So, for a specified k you know how to get alpha k and beta k. Once you know alpha k and beta k for all k, you determine i k. Once you have determined alpha k and beta k for let us say k is equal to 1 to m, m is the maximum lag, you can determine i k for all these k's because alpha k and beta k are known. Similarly, you know omega k 2 pi k by n. So, for a given k, you know omega k and i k, plot omega k on the x axis and i k on the y axis, you will get the spectrum. So, this is how we estimate the spectrum. Now, uh, what uh, we are doing by uh, calculating alpha k, beta k and then omega k etcetera is essentially to capture the inherent periodicities in the data. So, if you have plotted a correlogram in the time domain, correlogram would have already given you some idea about existence of periodicities. Now, this will be verified in the spectral analysis and also the information content uh, the, uh, the information on the frequencies or the periodicities inherent in the data comes out more prominently in the frequency domain and you can also examine the significance of the periodicities. So, you identify the periodicities and then examine the significance of these periodicities. The way we estimated the spectrum and uh, plot of uh, i k versus omega k that we just did is called as the line spectrum. Now, the line spectrum sp uh, transforms the information from the time domain to the frequency domain. 
As I said, while the correlogram indicates the frequent presence of periodicities in the data, the spectral analysis helps identify the significant periodicities themselves. We will do some examples by which we can demonstrate this fact. The line spectrum as we have defined is a statistically inconsistent estimate and the plot that we get typically is a is not a really a smooth function. You get spikes like this and then th these need not be actually 0, but they, there will be some lines like this and then there is another peak, another peak and so on. So, this is not a really a smooth function that we have defined. We smoothen the function and redefine the line spectrum. This is generally called in hydrologic literature at least as the power spectrum. So, the smoothened spectrum uh, is called as the power spectrum. For the same graph, it may appear something like this. So, you may have smoothened values. This is the power spectrum as we defined present uh, just now will be uh, is called as the uh, it is a consistent estimate of the spectral density. So, we define the power spectrum is a, this is actually a Fourier cosine transform of the auto covariance function. So, we, we know how to determine the auto covariance functions C k if you recall and we transform the auto covariance function as a Fourier cosine transform and then define the power spectral function. So, the power spectrum i k is given by 2 c naught plus 2 into summation j is equal to 1 to n minus 1 by 2 lambda j c j, c j are the auto covariance functions cos 2 pi f k into j. So, in this <coughs> summation you are talking about <coughs> j here these are called as lambda j's are called as the lag windows and there are ways of estimating the lag windows. For example, we talk about two key window, Parson window and so on, we will introduce one of the methods of estimating lambda j's uh, and all other terms are defined. So, C naught is your auto covariance function at uh, 0 which is just the covariance. Uh, in fact, it becomes uh, the variance sorry. <coughs> The lambda j's are estimated by what are called as uh, the, there are various expressions for uh, expressing lambda j for determining estimating the lambda j's. So, lambda j is equal to 1 by 2 this is given by 2 key window and this is most commonly used 2 key window and uh, Parson windows these are typically used for estimating lambda j's. We introduce the 2 key window here. So, lambda j is equal to 1 by 2. 1 plus cos 2 pi by m dash. Now, this m dash is slightly different from the m that we talked about the maximum lag. Now, m dash can also be about 0.25 n. Uh, a general uh, guideline for m dash or the maximum lag is that it should not be too small nor should it be too large so that you are not uh, missing the information content in the frequency distributions. Uh, so, typically we use about 25 percent of the data and some authors also recommend 2 root n, you go up to 2 root n. If you have 100 data, 2 into root of 100, so about 20. Uh, whereas, if you have 100 data this may indicate about 25 values. So, typically it should not be too large nor should it be too small. The smoothened spectrum which is omega k versus i k, once you estimate lambda j's you can estimate i k here the covariance functions are known. So, you estimate the covariance functions and you can estimate i k and omega k uh, is the same as what we did earlier 2 pi k by uh, n and you plot w k versus i k this is called as a uh, power spectrum. So, this will be a much smoother diagram and it is also a consistent estimate. Now, in the frequency domain analysis 
the information is extracted from the frequency domain that is from the spectrum. Let us say you have a completely random sequence. For example, you generate using your calculator a series of uniformly distributed random numbers in the interval 0 and 1 and you plot the uh, spectral density. For a completely random sequence, you will see that the spectrum oscillates like this. That means, you are unable to get any particular peaks in the spectrum. What does this mean? This means that the variance is rather uniformly spread. There is no particular frequency band which has more variance content than any other band. Such processes are called as white noise in the spectral analysis. So, the white noise indicates that no frequency interval here contains any more variance than any other frequency interval. And you recall that if you have a purely random sequence, your uh, rho k is equal to 0 for k not equal to 0. And this is the theoretical uh, rho k and if you have sample estimates r k, uh, the r k will be all significant for uh, all k not equal to 0. So, r k will be insignificant for all k not equal to 0. What do I mean by significance? Uh, if you recall, we uh, draw a band of 2 by root n actually 1.96 by 2 root n on either side plus 1.96 by root n and minus 1.96 by root n. Uh, this is at the 95 percent significance level. So, if all your r k or the uh, lag k correlations fall within this band, they are all insignificant. So, for a purely random process, you will have all r k's being insignificant and for a purely random sequence, if you draw a line spectrum or a power spectrum, the spectrum looks like this, which indicates that no frequency band contains any more variance than any other frequency interval that you consider. Typically what we do is in the, in the uh, run up to building time series models, first we plot the time series, then we plot the correlogram. We may suspect that the correlogram indicates some frequencies or some periodicities inherent in the data then we would like to be sure that we remove the periodicities from the time series because when we are building time series models x t is equal to d t plus e t, you want to first identify the d t. Once you identify the d t, you remove the deterministic component so that you can model only the stochastic component. To identify the periodicities, we then plot the spectrum, either uh, the line spectrum or the power spectrum, smooth spectrum and identify these periodicities. We also check for which of these periodicities that we have identified are in fact significant, so that you can use them in your models. The spectrum as we uh, showed just now, it shows several spikes like this, prominent spikes which indicate that there are periodicities inherent in the data. The period corresponding to any particular value of omega k may be computed by 2 pi by omega k. So, let us say you have a spectrum like this and you identified that this is a peak and this corresponds to a particular omega k. The period corresponding to that omega k will be simply 2 pi by omega k. Then let us say that we identified that this is a period and this is significant, but we, we are not so sure whether this is significant, whether this is significant and so on. How do I test? Once we know that a particular uh, peak is significant, let us say that this periodicity is significant, we remove the periodicity corresponding to this, reconstruct the series replot the power spectrum and then examine the periodicity for the next. So, the way we do is we test for the significance of periodicities one by one. 
let us say you remove this periodicity and test for the next highest period uh, highest peak, remove that and test for the next highest peak and so on. So, this is the way we test for uh, significance of periodicities. So, what do we do? We reconstruct the time series z t is equal to x t minus y t in which y t is the series containing the previous periodicities. So, we reconstruct it as x t minus y t where y t is defined as let us say that you want to remove d number of periodicities 1, 2, 3 etcetera up to d number of periodicities. So, you write y t uh, using your uh, frequency uh, domain notation as y t is equal to mu plus alpha 1 cos omega 1 t and so on. This is corresponding to the first periodicity omega 1, this term is corresponding to the second periodicity omega 2 and so on. So, you deduct terms corresponding to d number of periodicities omega d t. So, you are actually removing d periodicities through this series y t and you are constructing z t is equal to x t minus y t with d v number of periodicities removed. Typically in hydrologic applications we remove 1 periodicity, 2 periodicity, 2 periodicities, 3 periodicities and so on not more than that. So, we construct this series y t and reconstruct our x t and the spectrum of new series z t is plotted and the spikes are again observed. Now, when you uh, reconstruct this typically what we see again we see some <coughs> uh, prominent spikes let us say you removed one periodicity and then reconstructed the time series plotted the uh, spectrum for the reconstructed time series. You will see again signi uh, significant peaks visually you can see that there are significant peaks because you have removed the earlier significant periodicities the remaining periodicities now appear very prominently in the series uh, in the uh, spectral uh, density spectral diagrams. Just by visually uh, examining we may tend to conclude wrongly that these periodicities that we are seeing are statistically significant because they appear very prominently in the uh, time series in the transformed time series actually. But it is necessary for us to have statistical methods by which we can test the significance of uh, the, the periodicities that we so identify. And that is what is done, we introduce a statistic gamma square n minus 2 by 4 rho 1 cap, uh, this is given by Kashap and Rao 1976, the uh, reference is here. So, gamma square is alpha square plus beta square and rho 1 cap is estimated by this t is equal to 1 to n this is the particular periodicity which we are examining. So, omega k as identified in your spectral analysis you have identified a particular k and this is the periodicity which you want to examine for significance. So, omega k is known and t you are summing from t is equal to 1 to n. So, x t minus this particular periodicity removed that gives you rho 1 k and this alpha and beta are also for that particular k that you are considering. So, you know gamma square and n is known rho 1 cap is estimated and therefore, you know this is statistic. This statistic we check against the f distribution with 2 degrees of freedom, n is the number of uh, data points. So, if the statistic that we so computed is greater than the corresponding f value then it is significant, the periodicity at level alpha is significant. This test examines one periodicity at a time and it should be carried out on a series from which all the periodicities previously found to be significant are removed. So, this is done one, one by one, remove the first periodicity test for the second one, remove the second one 
test for the third one and so on like this uh, uh, you can do. Now, uh, when we build stochastic models for example, you are building models of the ARMA type etcetera which we will subsequently uh, introduce. You need the series to be devoid of any periodicities. So, you would have identified the you should identify the periodicities first, remove the periodic component from the series, reconstruct the series and then on the reconstructed model a uh, reconstructed series you build the uh, time series model stochastic models. So, a necessary condition in stochastic models in most stochastic models is that the series being modeled must be free from any significant periodicities. Now, let us say that we have identified the series consists of several significant periodicities. How do we remove these periodicities? Now, one way of doing this uh, that is we want to remove all the periodicities inherent in the data. One simple way of doing it is simply standardize the series that is equal to x t minus mu over sigma that is the, the long term mean by the standard deviation. If we normalize the series and then examine the uh, particular uh, uh, spectral uh, density, you may see that most of the uh, periodicities are removed. In many of the hydrologic applications, this uh, standardization works either standardization or normalization uh, works as a, as a first step. Then there are also techniques for differencing and so on of the series which will uh, remo remove certain uh, deterministic components. So, in a monthly time series for example, uh, in this expression we may write x t minus x i bar over s i. Let us say you are talking about monthly time series where t is equal to 1 to 12 and you are talking about the flows. Now, x i bar here indicates the mean of the particular month to which t belongs for example, mean of the January, mean of the February and so on. Similarly, s i is the standard deviation of the month to which t belongs. So, like this we uh, standardize the series. The series that we so standardized uh, has a 0 mean and uh, unit variance. So, this series is we can examine we will we will do through some examples uh, subsequently we will examine that the z t that we so obtained by transforming x t will be in most cases divide of any periodicities. So, we can use z t in our stochastic models. Let us look at a time series uh, the statistics are available let us say the flow uh, are available from 1979 to 2008, they will be available in this form that is the monthly stream flow will be available in this form. I have shown only one year data from June to May, but like this it is available from 1979 to 2008. So, you have the series of flow observed, we plot the time series first. So, you have uh, around 340 uh, some odd values here. So, you plot the time series, the time series looks like this immediately just the visual uh, examination of the time series indicates that there are there must be some periodicities inherent in the data. Uh, as you are seeing the time series itself shows some oscillations there and therefore, you suspect that there must be some periodicities inherent in the data. Then we plot the correlogram, how do we plot the correlogram? You, uh, you know uh, for different k you can estimate uh, rho k and then you plot rho k versus k the correlogram clearly indicates that there are periodicities here. You can get the peaks of the correlation on either side and then you can suspect that the periodicities are let us say corresponding to k is equal to 6, k is equal to 12, k is equal to 18 and so on. This indication that the time series and the correlogram together have given namely that there are periodicities inherent in the data. We now confirm or reconfirm with the spectral uh, analysis. So, we use the time series and draw the 
line spectrum. While the correlogram showed a smooth oscillations like this in the time domain, we convert this the time series into frequency domain and then do the frequency domain analysis, plot the line spectrum immediately you will see that there is one significant spike at a certain uh, omega k somewhere around 0 0.5. Similarly, another omega k around 1.1 or some such thing and so on. So, the line spectrum immediately extracts the information of the frequencies and then shows that there may be a periodicity here, periodicity here etcetera. If you recall again that what this shows is that there is a significant contribution to variance of the process around these frequencies. Much more significant contribution uh, compared to any other frequencies somewhere here. Similarly, suddenly you come across another spike where there is a significant contribution to variance around these frequencies and so on. So, these indicate that these are periodicities that are present here. This is the line spectrum which is an inconsistent estimate and then we also provide the power spectrum. So, power spectrum also as you can see between the line spectrum and the power spectrum, this is a slightly more smoothened uh, version of the spectrum where you have a slightly broader and smoother band around which uh, the variance, uh, the contribution to the variance are prominent. So, we identify this particular omega k value where we are seeing the peak. In this particular case, it is 0.5236. So, this peak occurs at 0.2536 both for the line spectrum as well as for the power spectrum. And the corresponding periodicity p is simply 2 pi by omega k, where that omega k is the value of omega k corresponding to this particular peak. So, 0.5236 will be the periodicity corresponding to this will be 2 pi by omega k, which corresponds to 12 months. This is a monthly time series. So, we directly get the periodicity as 12 months. The next peak here occurs at omega k of 1.0472, this corresponds to 6 months. When you do 2 pi by 1.0472, it you come to around 6. The actual value may be just 6 point something etcetera, but uh, you can, uh, you can uh, say that the periodicity is 6 months. Similarly, the next one corresponds to 1.571 and that indicates a periodicity of 4 months. Next corresponds to 2.094 here and that corresponds to a periodicity of 3 months. So, from the data from the time series data, you now identified by doing the spectral analysis, you now identified that there is a periodicity of 12 months and 6 months, 4 months and 3 months inherent in the data. But whether all of these periodicities need to be included in our time series models, all of these are uh, significant. Now, this needs to be tested by uh, by the test that we just indicated. So, let us say that we want to examine whether the third periodicity, we will assume that 12 months and 6 months, let us say they are significant, but we are not so sure whether the 4 month periodicity is significant, whether the 3 month periodicity is significant and so on. So, to test this, what we do is first you remove the first two periodicities that we have identified. That means, corresponding to omega k of 0 0.5 something and omega k of 1.0 something. These two periodicities you remove, reconstruct the data, reconstruct the time series and then replot the power spectrum and then see how, uh, whether these periodicities are significant. So, first we reconstruct the time series as z t is equal to x t minus y t. We are removing the first two periodicities here. So, the periodicity corresponding to omega 1 is removed here, periodicity corresponding to omega 2 is removed here, where omega 1 and omega 2 are here. This is omega 1 and this is omega 2. So, these two periodicities we are removing 
and then reconstructing uh, the time series as z t is equal to x t minus y t. So, omega 1 is this and the corresponding alpha 1 is 29.28 and beta 1 is 172.93. Now, these are obtained from your earlier expressions if you recall alpha k and beta k they are written here. So, for a given value of alpha uh, for a given value of k you know how to get alpha k you know how to get beta k. So, k is equal to 1 in the first case. So, you determine those and retransform the series. So, this is how you determine alpha 1 and beta 1. Similarly, for the second uh, spike that we saw in the spectral uh, density, you have omega 2 is equal to 1.0472, you get the corresponding alpha 2 and beta 2. So, here uh, all the terms are known. Construct y t series and then construct z t series from your original x t from did by deducting y t from your original x t say for example, for t is equal to 1 by putting all these values you get y 1 is equal to 215.5 and z 1 is equal to x 1 minus y 1. So, x 1 was in this data as you can see 54.6. So, 54.6 minus 215.5 you get minus 160.9 and so on. So, like this now you have constructed the z t series. Now, on the z t series now, this is how the time series plot of z t looks. So, initially you started with x t time series, the original observed data, you plotted the time series, you suspected that there were uh, periodicities present in that, you plotted the correlogram which confirmed that there were periodicities, then you plotted the spectral uh, density which brought out the periodicities corresponding to 12 months, 6 months, 4 months and 3 months you removed the periodicities corresponding to 12 months and 6 months from the data by transforming the data z t is equal to x t minus y t where y t is the series corresponding to the first two significant periodicities or suspected significant periodicities. And that is the series that we have plotted here now. So, this series looks uh, something like this. Then we plot the correlogram. Now, correlogram these are the significant bands, significance bands. Correlogram looks something like this. There are some peaks here, it is still oscillating and uh, there are some peaks which are way beyond the significance bands. We plot the power spectrum, this is how it looks. Now, the original power spectrum was somewhere here, uh, is uh, shown here. In the original power spectrum, there was a peak at somewhere around 0 0.5, there is no peak here because we have removed that. There was another peak at one point some, some value that is also removed. So, this is corresponding to 12 months, this is corresponding to 6 months, both of them are not absent, uh, not present here. The third peak which was occurring somewhere around 1.56 or some such thing that becomes prominent now. So, the effect of transformation that we did was to remove the earlier periodicities and bring out to the fore the other periodicities. So, these two become prominent now. Now, we can remove this from this figure it appears as if this has to be significant, but we have the test uh, that we can make uh, for examining this uh, significance. If we know that that is significant remove that and then again replot the power spectrum and then check uh, which other periodicities come up. The significance test of uh, periodicities or the identified periodicities from the power uh, the spectral analysis, how significant they are, we conduct the significance test to answer that question that we will discuss in the uh, next lecture. So, in today's lecture what we did is we introduced the uh, frequency domain analysis. In the frequency domain analysis we transform the time series x t into a, uh, a series consisting of uh, typically in the way we have introduced 
uh, sinusoidal terms. And then we plot we estimate the spectral density and we plot the spectral density against the angular frequency omega k and this gives uh, the periodicity is present the, uh, an idea of the periodicity is present in the present in the data. Then we uh, the way we have introduced the first expression that we have introduced is called as a line spectrum which is an inconsistent estimate and we converted that into a power spectrum. Uh, power spectrum is actually I am sorry we did not convert the line spectrum into power spectrum. We introduced another expression for power spectrum which is uh, a Fourier transform of the uh, covariance function and we plot the power spectrum again i k versus omega k and then see that there are prominent spikes. The prominent spikes that we see either in the line spectrum or the power spectrum indicate the particular periodicities. The omega k corresponding to a spike we can be transformed into the corresponding periodicity by p is equal to 2 pi by omega k. So, in the monthly time series that we saw as an example, we got significant periodicity, we, we got periodicity, I am sorry whether statistically significant or not needs to be tested, but we got periodicities corresponding to 12 months, corresponding to 6 months, 4 months and 3 months. We remove the first two periodicities for example, reconstruct the time series by removing the first two periodicities redraw the power spectrum of uh, the trans so transformed series and then we see that the first two periodicities are not, are not present in the uh, revised uh, power spectrum, but the third one becomes prominent, the fourth one becomes prominent, uh, prominently visible. We need to test whether the periodicities that we have so identified from the spectral density, uh, spectral analysis are in fact statistically significant. This exercise we will do in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.